Hey everyone, Mr. K here. Do another video on Java programming. We're gonna cover um, uh, recursion again today, and this is, I think, my third time trying to record this. Very annoying day so far. Um, hopefully, third time's a charm. Anyway, recursion this time. We're gonna be doing it with um, methods that return, and the meaning of that is basically a method that returns something is it passes information back to whatever it calls it so um, typically up to up until this point everything's been a void method which means it doesn't really do anything it's kind of like a dead end method it you know runs something and then once it's done what it's doing that's it it just ends that's it it maybe prints out something um, typically that's what we've been doing with our voids like this main right here um, it just prints. When it's done printing, that's it. It ends. Um, but return methods do a little bit differently in that they process information and then they take that information and they pass it back to whatever called it. So in this case, main is essentially calling my factorial method, which is down here. And when this factorial method is done, it's going to return a result. And that result is passed back to main and then main prints it. So it's just a way of passing information from method to method. Um, the example we're going over today is of course factorial and um, it's kind of a, it's dizzying to go through line by line because what happens in recursion, the method is calling itself, but the way this is doing it is not exactly obvious if you haven't done this before. So what we're gonna use is something from the book and the book is called think java by the way it's a free textbook online i forget who wrote it just look up type in think java it comes up right to the top um but this example is in the book and so is this handy dandy stack diagram a stack diagram is good for tracing a recursive um excuse me a recursive method and seeing exactly what it's doing it's actually good for tracing the entire program but I'm really busting it out here because we need to trace this recursive program. It's going to be kind of dizzying what it does. Um, so let's see if we can follow through, follow on what it's doing. So main goes to print factorial. Well, it can't print factorial because factorial has not run yet. So we call it factorial three. So factorial first runs. It has a value of three for n checks the if statement and is definitely not equal to zero. It's three. So we do not return run, we, ugh, sorry. We do not return one. We instead go to the else statement and the first thing that happens there is we have a recurse variable that looks to do factorial of n minus one. Well, that basically means we're calling the whole thing all over again. The only difference in is instead of calling it with three, we're gonna calling it with one less than three, which is two. So main ran, factorial ran with n is three, and then factorial ran again with n of two. Notice how this stuff is blank over here. We didn't do anything with it. We didn't even get down to, we don't know what recurse's um, value is yet. We don't want, we don't know what results value is yet. So it's just, has it been, hasn't happened yet. We just called factorial again. And in fact, it's gonna happen again because now factorial with two, still skipping the top part, we're going to the else and we're calling factorial again with n minus one. So now we have factorial running for a third time, this time with n minus one. And if you haven't guessed yet, it's gonna do it again. We're gonna skip the top part because n doesn't equal zero. We're gonna go right to recurse equals factorial n minus one and we're gonna run it one more time. So we now essentially have four active factorial methods. None of them have actually finished yet. Three of them started and didn't finish. They each called another one. And now we're on the last one. This one is gonna be the first one that actually gets to finish. Let's see what happens. N equals zero, finally. So this method will return one. So what happens is this fourth factorial um, method returns a one, so that one gets spit back up to the third factorial method, the one that called. And since that was called from here, that means recurse is equal to one. 
So that one basically got spit back up and is now stored in recurse for the third factorial method. So fourth returned, it returned a one, and that one now goes into the recurse for the third. I know this is probably confusing as all hell. Do yourself a favor, rewind this a couple times, listen to it over and over again until you get it, um, and stare at these diagrams. They do help. Well, anyway, the third factorial method now has the information it needs to finish because it knows that recurse is now equal to one, so it can do result. Result is n times recurse. Well, one times one is one. So result now has a value, so we go down to return, we turn the, we return the result. So now a one gets passed back up to the second factorial. Well, now that has what it needs because recurse is now worth one. Result equals n times recurse. Two times one is two. Return the result. Two gets spit back up to factorial. The first one, finally back to the very first factorial call, and that has what it needs. Recurse is going to be equal to the two that got spit back out. Result is n times recurse. Three times two gives you a six, and the six gets returned back to main. So if we run this, there is our six. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to com uh, uncomment this line here that I skipped over. And what this is going to do is each time um, this method is about to end, it's going to print out um, literally this equation right here. It's going to sp uh, spit out result equals n plus recurse, except it's going to have the values there. And there's something I want to show you about that that's important. Now, if you look at, oh, I lost the stack diagram. There it goes. Um, if you look at the way these things were called, the first one that was called had n of 3. But the first one that printed, the n is the second variable here, the first one that printed is 1. And then the second one that printed was 2. Well, that happened to be the second one here. The third one that printed, the third one that we called had an n of 1, but the third one that printed was a 3. The 0 one didn't print anything because it just returned. So it kind of does things seemingly backwards. And the reason for this is because of what a stack is. Um, I talked about it in the last video a little bit. Stacks are essentially like building blocks. So as you call methods, it stacks these blocks on top of each other. And those stack, those methods, those, um, the methods in the stack, the blocks, have um, this property called last in, first out. Um, sometimes abbreviated LIFO or LIFO and what that basically means is the last one in is the first one to be removed or processed and so that's what happened here um, this one's doing it from top down but um, you can think of them as, as turning it upside down if you want to um, main was the first method which called factorial which called factorial which called factorial which called factorial factorial this one finished so this one was essentially removed, and then this one processed, and that was removed, and this one processed, and that was removed, and this one processed and removed, and finally we're back down to main, and main finished. So it's last in, first out. So we built up this block, um, these blocks of methods, built up the stack of methods, and then we just whittled our way back down to main, and eventually it's done. So that's the way stack works, and you can. It's also one of the problems with recursion is these stacks do have a limit. Like if I did um, instead of factorial three, I think I did this last video too. But if you do like sixty thousand, I get a stack overflow error because there is a limit on how many stacks you can put in. Because if I did sixty thousand, sixty thousand, that means I have sixty thousand. Um, actually. 60,001 if you include main. I don't know. I'm probably off by one or two. You basically have 60,000 methods in the stack. It's just too much for Java to handle, so it returns an error. So there's a big downside to it, but um, the key thing to take away there is nope, there it is. Um, you are going to get things kind of backward. It's going to process the last one first and then eventually whittle its way back down. So the output might, depending on where you have the output, it might not make too much sense sometimes. Um, I think that's it. I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't think I am. Anyway, um, 
That's the factorial thing. It's in the Think Java book. If you're curious, you want to look it up and try it out. Um, hope that helped, and bye.